jumper saddles are so uncomfortable. Your knee is like squished. It's your legs like all the way up here and it's, ee, 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 you know, it just looks like I need to stretch my leg out. Hey, bitch, and welcome back to another Let's Judge Horse Trainers video. Today, we are going to be reacting to the... <laughs> thank you, thank you. Guys, out. Today, we're going to be reacting to... <laughs> it's like every time I try to film, my animals interrupt my video. It, the moment I try to film, three of my animals come into this room and they're like, I need your attention. Today, we're going to be reacting to Equine Helper. This video series is basically a video series that I'm making to try to help you guys differentiate between good and bad trainers and good and bad training advice on YouTube. So that way, when I leave YouTube, you guys know who to follow and who gives legitimate or illegitimate advice. But before we get into today's video, I have to say a huge thank you to this video sponsor, which of course is Animal Nutrition Calculator. I know I talk about them all the time. You guys know I'm a brand ambassador for them. I love them. I love their calculators. I love all the work that they do. I've worked so closely with this brand. I really, really, really love this. And I really think they're making such a huge difference. I appreciate all of the people who have used these calculators and who really like them. As you know, I love to hear your feedback about the calculators. A big thank you to everybody who has used them. Animal Nutrition Calculator is the world's first and most premium animal nutrition calculators. They have nutrition calculators available for horses, dogs, cats, small pets, birds, fish, livestock, and exotic animals. It really is one of the most useful things in the world. For just $4.99, which is literally cheaper than a cup of coffee, you guys get your animal's nutrition profile completely simplified for you. It makes feeding them and understanding their nutritional needs and requirements so easy. And even for certain animals like my hamster, some animals don't have commercially available or appropriate pet foods. So Animal Nutrition Calculator will help you create a diet based on different food ratios that your animal might need. All of their calculators are one-time use and for that you really get all of your animal's nutrition simplified. It is so amazing. It's so much easier than reading hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of veterinary textbooks. I honestly can't rave enough about this brand. You guys know Braley lost almost 100 pounds on their horse weight loss calculator and she looks so much better now. So a big thank you to Animal Nutrition Calculator. Again, literally every single person can use these. It's amazing. You guys can click my link down below and use code LINK25 for 25% off your purchase. I love you. Thanks to Animal Nutrition Calculator. Let's get to it. So obviously we always start with the buy Carmela is a lifelong horseback rider, horse enthusiast, and internet entrepreneur. Her websites have been viewed thousands of times by horse lovers around the world. For whatever reason, some people come out of the womb obsessed with horses. There's no explanation for it. These kids haven't even seen a horse yet, but it's all they can think about. I was one of those people. Although I've loved equines as long as I can remember, my horse story didn't really start until I was seven years old and my parents agreed to let me take riding lessons at a local stable. I remember my dad saying to my mom, it's just a phase and she'll grow out of it. Boy, was he wrong. I continued taking lessons once a week for four years. I looked forward to my lesson the entire week. Okay, wait, is this like a whole life story? I met two trainers who would change my life and the outlook of my riding ability. They poured their hearts into teaching me about horses and sharing with me all their knowledge. They let me work with other horses to learn and understand more. The majority of training techniques you read about on this website stem from what I've learned from them. In between working classes, I started watching Heartland. I am dead inside. This TV show kicked up the desire in me again to work with horses. Eventually, I decided enough was enough. I had to have a horse. This is how I met my Pony of America pony. I purchased him unbroken wide-eyed with the idea that he would be a great resell, but that quickly changed. Okay, I will say, I think it's fantastic. 
Let me formulate my opinion really quick. Every single time I hear somebody say, I watched Heartland and it encouraged me to start training horses. Now, I'm not saying that she is a bad trainer because of that. She obviously talked about how she did have two trainers that did legitimately teach her, which I think that's perfectly fine. Everybody has to learn from somewhere and learning from other trainers that you think are good trainers and then taking that knowledge and applying it yourself. I think that's a really valid achievement. But moreover, the whole Heartland thing, I've just seen so many kids that get involved in training horses because they think that it's going to be exactly like how Heartland portrays it. Or I see so many people that get involved with riding horses or ranch work because they see Yellowstone or any other horse show. Horses are not like what you see on TV. This is why so many people quit the horse world. And again, this has nothing to do with her. She didn't start training because of Heartland and whatever, okay? I'm just saying that a lot of people join the horse world because of shit that they see on TV and then they quit. Because it's nothing like what you see on TV. I'm sorry. It's just not. And you shouldn't start training or riding horses because you see that on TV. Carmela posts a lot of horse education type videos and training videos or helper videos as the name implies, on her Equine Helper YouTube channel. Today, I think we're going to be reacting to one of her most popular videos, and this is called How to Ride a Horse, Easy Beginner's Guide. I am going into this with an unbiased opinion. I truly believe that. But I will say the only piece of information that I have gathered about this channel so far before going into this is mostly that she posts beginner-friendly videos. Okay, so let's watch. Hey everyone, so I'm getting ready to go out to the barn and I thought that today what I would cover is how to ride a horse. So let's get ready to go. Bye Traco. Bye Traco. So I haven't seen Tucker in two weeks because I've been on vacation. So I'm excited to see him today. Oh, it's cold and muddy. Hi buddy. Hi. Hi buddy. I've missed you. So glad that she keeps her horses on pasture. I totally get it if you don't have access to pasture. I mean, I lived somewhere where there was literally zero pasture options available, which was Southern California, and I lived there for three years. It was so miserable. But I did try to get as much turnout on a daily basis for him as possible. You should always choose pasture when you have the option to, because pasture is so much better for horses mentally, physically, definitely only take advice from trainers who regularly keep their horses in pastures. That should be your first clue that somebody knows what they're doing is just the quality of life that they provide their horses when they're not training or riding them. Unless, like I said, they don't really have an option because there are places in the world where you just don't have the option to keep your horse on pasture. So before I get on my horse, I'm gonna first brush them just to remove any dirt and also make sure they're not sore anywhere and to scratch the scratchies. I'm also gonna just pick out the feet to make sure there's no rocks that can cause him discomfort when he's being ridden. Well, now I'm gonna tack up. I'm gonna put on my saddle and everything I need to ride and I'm gonna use this lovely new saddle pad I just got. Yeah. So I got my saddle on and now I'm gonna tighten my girth. So the girth holds your saddle in place and it kind of is like a belt that it wraps around your horse. All right, and now I'm just gonna put the bridle on and the bridle is basically to give you some control and help you steer your horse. I get what she's trying to say. And I understand again that this video is for beginners. So this is not a criticism because she's just trying to simplify things. But I will say, I want people to stop thinking of bridles as a means of control because you don't have control over a 1200 pound animal. It doesn't matter if you're using a bridle, a bit, a <laughs> Musarola nose band, you don't have control over a 1200 pound horse. It's just, it's, it's this imaginary fictional thing that people want to believe that they have. It's not true. And you should never rely on any piece of equipment for control. Train your horses appropriately, learn how to ride the best that you can, and most importantly, accept that it's okay for stuff to not always go your way. It's okay if there's a day where your horse freaks out and you fall off. It's okay. 
that's just how life is. Life is not all sunshine and roses. You don't always have to have this imaginary idea of control over your horse because it's not there anyway. Don't rely on bridles or bits or any piece of equipment for control because that's not going to happen. And your life is just going to be easier if you just go ahead and accept that now. <laughs> so trust me, I had to figure that out over probably 10 years. So before you go to get on your horse, you want to make sure you unroll your stirrups and also check your girth to make sure it's tight enough. You want to be able to fit four fingers in your girth. So now it's time to actually get on your horse and you can do this the same way either from a mounting block or from the ground. I use a mounting block because it's easier on their backs. So I'm up on my mounting block now and I'm going to make sure I'm mounting from the left side of my horse. So when you go to get on your horse you want to make sure that you gather your reins up so you still have control. Please don't grab the reins when you get on. That's something that I will say to everyone. I get it. Okay, I, I totally get it that some people fear that their horse is going to walk off or run off or whatever. Please don't grab the reins. Don't make a habit of that. You should teach your horse to stand while mounting. When you grab the reins, not only is that like showing some level of distrust in your horse, you think your horse is going to walk off on you, but also you could potentially, and this is especially for children, pull on the horse's face or give mixed signals by pulling the reins in any which way. I just don't recommend kids learn to grab the reins when they get on because I've seen this so many times, guys. I've seen so many kids go to get on and they grab the reins and then the horse starts backing up or freaking out or walking or doing this and that because the kid's giving mixed signals. First things first is you're gonna need to know how to hold your reins correctly. So to hold your reins correctly, what you're gonna do is put your rein in between your pinky and your ring finger and then you can shut your hands around it and then put your thumb on top. So now let's cover riding position. You want to turn your thumbs up towards the sky and you want to look forward and in front of your horse. Next I'm going to make sure that I'm rolling my shoulders back to help me sit up straight and I'm going to bend my elbows to be at my side. I want to make sure that I'm loose through my thigh and my knee so I'm not gripping. I want to make sure the stirrup is on the ball of my foot, my heels are down, and my foot is right under my hip. So that was a lot we just covered, but most importantly you just want to make sure you can draw a straight line through your head, down through your hip, and to your heel. And that way you're sitting up tall and you have this linear line through you. So now let's talk about how to move your horse forward. So once again, this is in the most simplest terms. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, I want to make sure I'm not pulling on my horse's mouth with the reins. So I can give with my hands a little bit and get out of their mouth. And then I'm going to just squeeze with my lower leg to ask my horse to move forward. And there he goes. So if you're pulling on your horse's reins and squeezing, this is what's going to happen. They're going to back up instead of going forward. So I want to make sure I'm giving with my hands to get my horse to go forward. So you can use the same concept to go faster on your horse. So I'll get out of my horse's mouth and squeeze with my lower leg and we can pick up a trot. So you may be wondering how you stop your horse once you've gotten going. So what you can do is sit up nice and tall, put your weight down into your heels and then close your fingers around your reins and your horse will come to a stop. So I'm gonna actually show you what to do at a standstill when it comes to stopping your horse, just cause it's very small little nuances. So what you're gonna do first is sit up nice and tall and you can even kind of sit back on your pockets. And so you're closing your hips and then you also just wanna stretch down into your stirrups. I'm so sorry. This looks so uncomfortable to me. Again, it has nothing to do with her. This is just me being nitpicky. I'm so sorry. I am so glad that I don't ride in <laughs> jumper saddles anymore, close contact saddles. Oh, that knee position looks so uncomfortable. The best thing I ever did was switch to a dressage saddle. And also I like my Western saddle too, but yeah. Jumper saddles are so uncomfortable. Your knee is like squished. It's your legs like all the way up here and it's, ee, 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 you know, it just looks like I need to stretch my leg out. Like I need to hang my leg long and low. That just looks so uncomfortable. I'm so glad I don't ride in those saddles anymore. I'm so sorry. I just had to say that because that's really what was going through my mind right there is how lucky I am to not have a close contact saddle. Ugh. So once I've done those things, the next thing I'm going to do is just kind of close my hand around my reins. So as I'm riding, my hands may be a little bit more loose. So I can close my fingers. And if that doesn't stop the horse, I can slightly pull back 
until they halt. So one thing I find super helpful, especially if you're new to horseback riding, is knowing how to do the one rein stop. So the one rein stop is basically the emergency brake for your horse. So if maybe you feel like you're out of control or your horse has taken off, you can do this to get them to stop quickly. So to do the one rein stop, what you're gonna do is reach your hand down one rein and then you're gonna bring that rein back towards your hip, asking the horse to turn its head towards your knee. So what this does is it keeps the horse from moving forward and instead the only thing the horse can do is turn in a tight circle. So let's talk about steering your horse. So there's basically two types of steerings you'll come across. One is plow reining, and that's when you have two hands on the reins, and this is done mostly by English riders. Or you're gonna come across neck reining, which is where you hold the reins with one hand, and you'll see this more with Western riding, or if you go on a trail ride or something like that. So when it comes to using plow reins like an English rider would, how you're gonna steer your horse is you're just gonna open your hand in the direction you wanna go. So if I wanna steer towards you guys, I'm just gonna open this hand and you'll see that his nose tips towards you. And so from there, what I can do is squeeze with my legs to get him to move towards you and even help him out some more. I can use my opposite leg over here and I can squeeze my lower leg and he'll turn right towards you guys. So if you guys see, I can open my hand and he'll turn this way. Then I can open this other hand and he'll go back this way. And so this is how you're gonna use your reins if you're learning English or learning how to do the plow rein. So the other way you're gonna steer your horse is through neck reining. So when it comes to neck reining, what I'm gonna do is I'll have both reins in one hand. And if I wanna to steer towards you guys, I'm gonna lay my opposite rein against his neck and also use my opposite leg and squeeze with my lower leg to get him to turn towards you. So I'll lay that rein, squeeze my leg, and see how he turns. So with neck reining, I can lay my rein, use my leg, and he'll go in that direction. And likewise, I'll change my direction here. And so you're just going back and forth. Good pony. So there's a lot more to caring for your horse than just riding it. And I made a video about everything you need to know about caring for your horse. Okay, I mean, that's great. It's, again, very basic stuff, but that's literally what she does. She just does very basic beginner stuff, which I think is absolutely great for people. I think that it's good to see people that are just putting out genuinely positive videos trying to help people be not terrible. <laughs> I will say, I wish that she had included in there pressure and release. Because one thing that I see so often is when you're teaching children directions, stopping, going, whatever, which this is one of the reasons why I never taught kids to use pressure from their legs to get horses to move. I think that's more of something that you would teach a more advanced rider because children, when you teach them how to go or how to stop, usually they just always want to keep pressure on the horse in some way. Like if you teach kids to squeeze with their legs and then they get used to squeezing with their legs and then they're over squeezing with their legs, even if they don't mean to do that or pulling. I see that a lot with pulling where when you teach kids to only pull horses to go in different directions, then they usually are a lot harder on the reins. They're a lot more heavy handed. So I think it's important to teach children verbal cues as well. And I really wish, that's my only critique, that I wish that she would have included verbal cues because there's many different types of verbal cues that in my opinion are better to teach children when you're first learning out how to ride. So that way you don't have to worry about teaching pressure and release to kids during these very beginning stages. I think this type of content is needed. I really believe that. There's a lot of kids that want to get into riding horses, but they don't know anything about finding a good teacher. You should find really good beginner instructors on YouTube like Equine Helper, and then judge the trainer that you're going to in real life based off of the good trainers that you see online. Are they giving you the same advice? Are they giving you the same quality of advice? Do they know relatively the same amount? And then that's how you would determine if the trainer you're working with in real life is suitable for you. Because again, just like the internet, there are plenty of trainers in real life that suck, that don't know what they're doing. Obviously, no hate to her. All of the criticism I had was largely unrelated to her in this video. I think her videos are perfectly fine for the average person uh, who's learning how to ride. And I think that it's way more beneficial to learn from somebody like this versus learning from somebody who... 
can't even put a saddle on properly. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's Let's Judge Horse Trainers video. I really appreciate it. You can check her channel out. It's going to be linked down below. Don't forget to check out Animal Nutrition Calculator. Love them. Thank you again for sponsoring me, but I'll see you in my next video. Bye.